This video is sponsored by Brilliant. We always talk about what each continent has, which is the biggest, which has the longest river, which has the most people. Now let's see what each continent doesn't have. And there is only one continent in the world that doesn't have a desert. For example, Africa has the Sahara Desert, Asia has the Gobi, Central Asian deserts in the Middle East, Australia has the Great Victoria, North America has the Great Basin, South America has the Atacama Desert, and even if you look at from the space, Europe is the only continent in the world that surprisingly doesn't have any deserts. It's totally lush green. And the question is, why deserts are so widespread around the world except in the European continent? When you hear the word desert, chances are you will think of sun, sand, and might give you the feeling of thirst, perhaps cacti, vultures, scorpions, or possibly camels and oases come to mind as well. But in truth, deserts come in all shapes and sizes and vary considerably from one part of the world to the next. Scientifically, a desert is an arid ecosystem that receives fewer than 10 inches of rain annually. And basically, deserts are defined by having a greater rate of annual evaporation than annual precipitation. And they do not have to be hot. The term desert includes polar deserts, subtropical deserts, and cool coastal deserts. A lot of people think that the Sahara is the largest desert in the world, but it's not. It's not even the second largest. As a matter of fact, the largest desert on Earth is the Antarctic Desert, covering the continent of Antarctica with a size of around 5.5 million square miles. And the second largest is the Arctic Desert with 5.4 million square miles. And these two are known as polar deserts. And finally, the third biggest is the Sahara Desert, which is subtropical with 3.5 million square miles. Desert ecosystems support little vegetation and animal life, as the conditions are extremely harsh and unforgiving. On the opposite, any area that receives more than 10 inches of rain is referred to as humid. And it's mostly Europe, tropical areas like Amazon, Central Africa, and East Asia. If you look at this map, where the deserts and drylands of the world are located, deserts cover around 40% of the Earth's land area, and it's expanding year by year, covering much of North Africa, North America, Australia, the Middle East, and Central Asia. These drylands are home to approximately 3 billion people. Surprisingly, there are no single deserts in the European continent. There is Tabernus in Spain, which is classified as semi-desert, and the largest desert in France is Dune of Pilat. Even Germany has one in Brandenburg. It's around 5 square kilometers, and it's basically a joke. There are a handful of other areas considered semi-deserts in Europe, but generally, most of Europe gets sufficiently high amounts of rainfall, so desert climates don't form. And you might be asking why? There are a lot of variables that prevent desertification in Europe, it's mostly because of atmospheric circulation model called Hadley cells. For example, the reason why Sahara is a huge desert is due to this Hadley cells model, which are large-scale atmospheric circulation loops that take moisture from places along the latitude of the Sahara and the American Southwest and drop it along the equator in the Congo and Amazon. The same thing happens on the other side of the equator with the Australian outback, losing moisture to Indonesia. Another reason why deserts form is because of the rain shadow effect. If you look at the places where two areas are separated by a large mountain range, like the Himalayas in the Indian subcontinent, the Sierra Nevada in California, you will notice that one half gets tons of rain and resembles a rainforest, and the other half gets virtually no rain and resembles a desert. The reason is, once again, trade winds are controlled by Hadley cells and Coriolis effect. When moist, humid air moves in from a large body of water, like an ocean, it moves inland and rains itself out over one half. Then, when it travels over a mountain range, it dries itself out. As a result, once it passes into the other half, all the rain is gone and the winds are dry. It's because of the rain shadow effect, why Gobi is a desert, so is the Nevada. The case with Europe is interesting. So as we saw that desert formation depends on the latitude and shape of the continent, Europe is fairly small compared to other continents and surrounded by ocean on three of its four sides. Prevailing winds and weather come from over the Atlantic and make their way west, dropping moisture along the way. Additionally, the North Sea and the Mediterranean add moisture as well. Well, 
The mountain ranges like the Alps help by generating orographic rainfall, and then that moisture is mostly gone by the time the winds reach Asia. Hence, Western Asia near the eastern edge of Europe has large deserts. Northern Africa, in contrast, is mostly desert because weather patterns and direction is different and not moisture laden. Southern Africa is wetter because the weather patterns are different as you move south in latitude. So it mostly goes down back to Hadley cells. Another important factor is the presence of relatively warm water around Europe. For example, in the Atlantic Ocean to the northern part of the continent runs the warm Gulf Stream. It bears on the continent very heavy rainfall because the warm ocean waters cause very strong fumes. This is one of the big reasons why the British Isles, Scandinavia and the northern Europe are rainy and very cloudy all year long. In the rest of the southern Europe, more important is the impact of the warm Mediterranean. It makes autumn and winter fairly moist and protects the southern parts of the continent from desertification, although summers are very long and dry. Because of the climate and the rising temperatures, by 2100, southern Europe, mostly the Iberian Peninsula, might turn into a desert if carbon emission trends keep going. We have talked in the video about stopping desertification and how African countries are building the Great Green Wall of Africa in the southern part of the Sahara. Carbon emissions and climate change is accelerating desertification around the world. As a matter of fact, there is more carbon resides in soil than in the atmosphere and all plant life combined. There are 2,500 billion tons of carbon in soil compared with 800 billion tons in the atmosphere and 560 billion tons in plant and animal life. So desertification is a much more serious threat to humanity than fossil fuels and chemical industries combined as 40% of the land surface is already a desert and they are expanding in an alarming rate. So the European continent is a huge carbon storage. I have made a couple of videos about how to turn deserts green and how some countries are fighting back against desertification by planting trees and implementing large-scale afforestation. Here is the list, please check them out. In order to understand desertification and geographical concepts better, it's always good to have a scientific approach and thinking. So one of the best ways to improve your scientific thinking is Brilliant.org. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. It's a website with interactive courses and quizzes that let you dive into topics like the ones I have shown in this video, including calculus, solar energy, programming, Python, and many more. Brilliant got you covered. I'm taking courses in the science section and it's helping me to think like a scientist and statistician and physicist. I love the way they scaffold you through a topic building your understanding and confidence as you go. Additionally, because it's interactive, it trains your brain to solve real-life problems. Join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer just for you. Head over to brilliant.org slash curious reason to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 listeners will also get 20% off an annual membership. Go to the link in the description to get the discount. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks to everyone who is supporting me on Patreon. Your support means a lot.